What's up guys, c 13 here. And in today's video, we're gonna be unboxing the Chisona H2 Pro keyboard case for the iPad Pro. Alrighty guys, so here is the Chisona H2 Pro, I believe the model number is. And uh, this is basically the second generation of the H1 Pro. And I'm pretty sure there was either an Indiegogo or Kickstarter, or there was some crowdfunding campaign for the original version of this for the 2018 generation iPad Pros. Now, from what I can tell, the only, re the only real change on this one from the original version is the increased camera cutout for the new camera array on the 2020 iPad Pros. However, with that being said, uh, otherwise seems unchanged. The price on this thing when I bought it was $99.98, so 100 bucks, and there was a 5% off coupon, so if you check that, you get $5 off, so it's about 95 bucks. Now, this thing's claim to fame is that it gives you a full-size keyboard. It, it gives you uh, expansion ports. It got, you get two USBs, you get an HDMI, and you also get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now, the other advantage, of course, is unlike almost every other keyboard case that I've seen, it actually has full protection all the way around. In addition, you still have Apple Pencil charging despite this side being covered and you have a place to securely store the pencil inside when you close this thing up like a laptop. It also has a backlit keyboard, which is something that is sorely missing from the original keyboard folio that Apple came out with with the uh, iPad Pro originally. However, this is also more versatile than let's say the Magic Keyboard uh, case because you can remove the top part very easily while still keeping the iPad protected and then you can instantly reconnect it. So there's the advantage there, obviously no trackpad however. So anyway, let's go ahead and open this thing up. I'm excited to see because I do use my keyboard for a lot of work on my iPad. So if this thing actually proves effective and stands up to my different tests and usage cases, man, this is gonna be a huge productivity boost for my iPad Pro. So let's go ahead and open this up. So, so just a nice uh, Apple style box where the cover slides over to the bottom. And there it is. So there is the case. And uh, yeah, that's all that comes in the box. I think there may be a cable in there, but uh, probably not because it's uh, USB-C charging. So I think they presume you've already got a charger for your iPad. Um, so we've got our instruction manual here. We've got a little review thing here. All right, so here is the case. And let's see, okay, that, wow, that hinge is actually, that's not bad. Um, there's a little, oh, that's neat, look at that. You got a little pocket right in the middle for the, for the silica gel, that's pretty cool. All right, that just comes out. And so there it is. There's the back. Got our inspection sticker right there. So you can see here's the keyboard. It comes with a little silicone cover. I, I don't really plan on using this, but I guess the reason it's there is if you are worried about crumbs or dirt getting into your keyboard. If you're kind of messy, this might make sense for you. But I definitely prefer the feeling of the uh, naked keyboard. It's definitely a better typing experience. Got a little sticker goo here let's get that off of there all right let's take a look at this keyboard hopefully you guys can see that uh, that seems pretty nice and the great thing about this that you have to remember is all of this is powered by the ipad so there is no external separate battery to charge uh, there's nothing to worry about with bluetooth connectivity it all comes directly off the iPad. And this is how the top separates, by the way. So there's the top. You can see the bottom. You've got those different slots that lock into the different um, tabs here at the bottom. So when you drop your iPad on there, the hinge functions normally. 
and uh, this is probably the this is the maximum point of travel for it. So if you want the screen in any other position after this, your best bet is to remove the iPad. I know myself included, um, a lot of people were interested to know whether or not uh, you could sort of fold this back on itself like um, Lenovo Yoga or whatever, you know, any of those standard two-in-one fold back hinge style a laptop tablet combos. Uh, you can't do that, but uh, because you can take this off pretty easily, I, I really don't see that as a, a big downside. So, oh, and uh, on the back here, you've got your on off switch. So I did forget this is actually another difference between the two. The original, I don't think anyway. If you guys do have the original and, and this, I'm, I'm wrong on this, please let me know in the comments. Um, but I don't believe the original version had an on-off switch. So this is a nice feature because uh, instead of having to wait for it to uh, time out and then having to wake up the keyboard again, you can just manually switch it off if you're not planning to use the keyboard. And then if you're going to use the keyboard for a while, you can leave it on. That way it doesn't keep timing out if you're doing some typing and then pausing to read something and then typing again. So let's go ahead and uh, put the iPad in here. I'm going to take the bottom off. So the way this thing works, and I'm, uh, I'm going to take my iPad out of its current setup, which is the keyboard folio inside the iBlazin combo case. So basically the iBlazin case surrounds the keyboard folio part way and gives me that added side protection and uh, pencil retention that the original doesn't uh, give you on its own. If you guys are interested in this one, I love this case. I've been meaning to do a video on it actually for a long, long time, but I just, I get distracted and then I, I end up putting it off and I forget about it. So if you guys are interested, I'll leave a link in the description for this case as well. Definitely you can go check it out. If you're interested in me making a video about it, uh, let me know in the comments because uh, I might finally get to do that video if you guys really are interested in it. So let me go ahead and take it out of this case. And you're going to have to apologize for the... Uh, fingerprints and the, the nastiness here. So a lot of people had complained about how difficult it was to get the iPad into this case. So we're gonna see, cause I, I, you know, I am always a little, I'm a little worried anytime there's a case that's, that's super stiff to get in because, well, we already know there's bending issues with the iPad. And the last thing I wanna do is unnecessarily flex the iPad. So let's, yeah, that's pretty stiff guys. Having a hell of a time getting in there. Oh my God, guys, I, I legitimately don't feel comfortable putting this much force on my iPad. That is, uh, that's, that's terrifying. Hang on. Let's see here. I'm going to just work it real slow. Yeah, guys, that, that I'll, I'll tell you that this is a, a terrifying amount of force that's required and, uh, I, I don't like it. <laughs> Maybe for some of you guys, you really don't care, but it's, I guess it's for me knowing how delicate the iPad really is in terms of how easy it can actually bend. This is a little bit scary of an experience, so. Two hours later. Okay, all right. So we managed to get the iPad in there. That That is a that is a terrifying amount of force, and uh, I'm terrified of how difficult it's gonna be to remove it. <laughs> but uh, definitely, with that installation, please guys, go slow. I can't stress that enough. You don't wanna force this thing. It's very stiff. And considering how flexible and, and delicate the iPad really is, uh, you don't want to be shoving this thing in there real hard because you could actually bend the iPad. So the way I found is the best and what seems to be the safest way to do it is to make sure you go button end in first, make sure the buttons are lined up, make sure this whole bottom side is lined up and then slowly work it up the sides and then you're going to slowly force it down in this direction because you got to remember guys, the iPad is going to be strongest in this direction and weakest in the lateral plane style uh, direction. So you don't want to be forcing down the iPad like this. Ideally, you want to make sure you force it down this way so that it can clear this lip a lot better. So anyway, that's that. The iPad's in there. The next step is to go ahead and install your uh, USB-C cable. The other thing that we're going to have to see is What's the blockage like on this port? So there it is. It's hooked up into the port. You can see it says unlock iPad to use accessories. All right, I'll go ahead and get into my iPad here. So there we are. So far, so good. iPad's not broken. 
uh, let's go ahead and check charging. So let me go ahead and go grab a charger because we want to make sure that that USB-C port uh, actually works. So I got a power bank right here. And indeed, we are charging, as you can see there. So that is good to know. So USB-C port works. Uh, it is a little loose though. That's the only thing I worry about is, is that port gonna stand up to the test of time. Next, let's go ahead and hook it up to our keyboard. Oh, oh we got power guys. Look at that. So there's our backlight. Oh, also, sorry guys, I'm all over the place. Let's make sure that the Apple Pencil charging actually functions. So I don't know if you guys can see the screen. Apple Pencil charging works. It still shows up. So the keyboard backlight comes on and uh, you can adjust the brightness with this key right here. And I believe if you press and hold that down, yep, you can switch to the colors with the arrow keys. So there you go. So a lot of different selections on the colors there. So I'm really liking that. And then let's check out this uh, place that you can store the Apple Pencil right here. I can't tell, but I'm pretty sure, I think that has a magnet in it, but I could be wrong. It could just be uh, the weight of the pencil. But anyway, there is a nice flat place for it right in there. A little tricky to get out of there though, but not a problem because realistically, you're only gonna be putting it in and, there, in and out of there once or twice, whereas most of the time you're using your iPad, it's gonna be stored right up here. So that's cool. It does appear that it still actually goes to sleep. I don't know if you guys saw that. It, it kind of turned off there after not being used a little while. But the cool thing is it definitely wakes up pretty quick. And I actually think that the sleep that I saw was only a matter of the lights going off. The keyboard response time is great. So in fact, I'm going to let this just sit real quick and we'll wait for the backlight to go off and we'll see how good the response time is. So I'm not touching the keyboard at all. I'm not doing anything. I'm going to wait for it to see if it times out. So it timed out again, the light went off. Let's see if I get an instant response when I touch this uh, space bar on the scrolling. Yep. So the only thing that actually went off is the backlight. As far as the keyboard is concerned, I think it's still on. So I think the advantage with this one is you're gonna have still a very responsive keyboard and then you can always just switch it off in the back if you are looking to conserve power. Let's say you're watching a movie or something like that, but you're doing it on battery power. You don't want the keyboard draining power from your iPad and maybe you don't wanna have to bother pulling this thing out uh, on the side. So you can just hit the switch on the back Keyboard's completely dead, but you can still use this as a stand to watch a movie or maybe you're even doing some drawing or something like that on the screen. So that's a pretty nice thing to have. And then when you're ready, you can just turn it back on as soon as you want an actual keyboard and you're there, there you go. Now, the other nice thing about this keyboard over let's say the Apple keyboard folio or even the Magic Keyboard accessory is that you have a full function row. So first of all, you've got a home button so that takes you home and you can see all your different functions work. So like if you're on the home screen and then you hit the home button twice, it'll bring you to your app switcher. You've got brightness control. You've got your keyboard for your on-screen keyboard. So like, let's say you're ready to type, that'll toggle your on-screen keyboard. So if you wanna just use your regular keyboard, that's fine. But if there's a special character you're looking for, and it's easier to find it on an on-screen keyboard as opposed to knowing the shortcut. Well, you just hit that button, on-screen keyboard shows up. This is your language switch button. So for me, I have a, a jailbreak tweak that always sets the language button to just switch to emojis, so you can see that. So it always goes to emojis. But if you don't have that set up, it'll, it'll cycle through all your different languages. I've got uh, Chinese in there as well, but usually I don't use that very often, so I just cycle to that manually. Uh, you get your play pause here for music, so if I hit that, it'll start playing music. I can skip with these two buttons here. You've got mute, which I don't know if you guys can see the little uh, pop up there for the volume, but uh, there you go. And of course you got volume control, which uh, on default, if I'm not playing media is gonna be my ringer, but uh, if you have it set to just control media volume, that's what that'll do directly. And you've got your lock, so that'll lock the iPad. That's just like another lock button basically. Uh, and then you've got a delete button at the end there. Let me just unlock it, there you go. And uh, there you go. The other thing that I really like about this keyboard is it's got a standard inverted T arrangement for the arrow keys. That's very nice. You've got two 
uh, Apple or command buttons rather function button down here control option and you've got a full-size keyboard again maybe a little bit smaller than full size but you know as far as typing is concerned it's just a very pleasant experience very 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 pleasant experience the backlighting is very good you've got a tab key your caps lock now the only thing I will say is I don't like that the caps lock doesn't have a light I know it's a small gripe to have but I wish that it had an indicator light because, you know, I'm one of those weird people that types with the caps lock key instead of the shift key. It's just usually what I do. So I don't like not having a light to know if it's on or not. So very small gripe and for most people, really not gonna matter. All right guys, let's take a look at some of the other things that this case has to offer. So of course, it's not just about the keyboard and the fact that it folds like a laptop. It's also the accessory ports so of course you've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack you've got a usb i think it's just 2.0 um, but you've got a usb a port on this side you've got a usb a port on this side and you've got hdmi right here so let's go ahead and try out the headphone jack i know some people are going to be very curious about that as am i now, I don't really use headphones very often. I've talked about this in many of my videos. I generally don't like the experience of the isolation of headphones, but I found some headphones and uh, we're gonna try them. They're not exactly high quality. These are old Apple earbuds. So positive click in there. That's another thing. A lot of the people that reviewed the first gen unit complained about the fact that the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack had a very spongy engagement and there wasn't a positive click with good retention. You can see here, this is very good retention. I'm giving it a good tug. I don't, obviously don't want to break anything, whether it's the headphones or the jack itself, but you're, you've got a very good retention on there. And as you heard, positive click. So you know that your headphones are in. So let's go ahead, get those headphones in there and I'll go ahead and hit the play button and play whatever song I had uh, lined up. So I'm gonna try and hold this up to the phone. So before I get copyright striked, that is, uh, that's definitely working. Both earbuds are working, so that's good. So the headphone jack works. I will go ahead and try, let's see. Let's go ahead and try some external storage now on the USB ports. All right, so I've got my compact SSD here. Let me go ahead and plug it into the side here. And I'm gonna try and turn this around so you guys can see. I'll go into files. And as you can see, the files are indeed showing up. So this is really cool. Definitely cool to have a built-in USB port on the base there. And even that, like I said, that HDMI up top is gonna be great as well for great video output. So if I wanna hook up to an external monitor, no more dongles, I've got what I need right there. And then the best part is when I'm not using it, I got myself a nice compact package. I just turn off that switch and I'm ready to go. Once I pull the iPad out of the bag, turn that switch back on, I open it up and I've got myself a nice laptop experience. If I decide, hey, I'm done, I wanna use the iPad as an iPad, there we go. Additionally, I will say this cable being long for some might be a downside because now it doesn't sit flush. I like this. One of the things I was worried about was that it was gonna block this speaker because I like having all four speakers functional. Not at all. This doesn't block anything because, well, it's not sitting flush. So for you guys that really want to sit flush, you can still sort of force it down there if you want. For me, I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's not in my way. I really don't care aesthetically. I couldn't care less because if I'm putting this on my iPad for all the functionality, at the end of the day, uh, the looks really aren't a big deal anymore. So for me, uh, it's a trade-off, right? If I want it still functional, but a little bit more sleek, but uh, with the sacrifice of both the typing experience and some of the features, I would go with the setup I had before. And uh, there might be occasions where I still rock this setup with the iBlazon case and the keyboard folio here. But I think for the vast majority of times, this is actually going to be a better choice for me because I've got the keyboard set up, I've got the laptop experience, but I can still pull this off for that seamless iPad experience. 
But anyway, guys, that's been my unboxing of the Chisona H2 Pro. I have to say, I'm very impressed with this thing. I'm definitely going to be testing this thing out to see how things like the hinge hold up, the keys. Some people were saying they're having weird connectivity issues where it kept disconnecting. So that's going to be something that I'm going to check on. Also, seeing how long that the, how long this USB-C port lasts because I do plug in and unplug my iPad a lot. So if that craps out after a week, definitely not a good sign. And also just uh, how well this actually balances on my lap. I think it's it's going to be workable as long as my palms are resting on it. But you can see there isn't a whole lot of weight in the bottom, which is good. It keeps it lighter than, let's say, the, the Magic Keyboard uh, case. However, as a result, uh, it's going to be virtually impossible to open with one hand. Um, you can see it's not going to open. So you're going to, you, you can get it part way, but then when the hinge really starts to engage, you've got to use your hand to open the rest of the way. The advantage, of course, being that it's lighter weight. There is more bulk than I'd like, obviously. They could have made this thinner, but that would have taken a lot of engineering costs that, well, you know, at the end of the day, if you want something at this price point with the features that it has, honestly, you can't complain. I like the external build too. The materials and the patterns and the textures seem pretty nice. It's, it's industrial looking, I'll give it that. Also, uh, side note, one of the things I hate, absolutely hate about a lot of these case manufacturers is their insistence on making a cutout right where the Apple logo is. Listen guys, I didn't forget what device I had, okay? If I'm buying a case to cover the iPad, I wanna protect the whole thing. And when you put a hole right there, not only do you open up the glossiest part of the back of the iPad to scratches, you also allow dirt and little grit and sand particles a place to enter the back of the iPad and then sit behind the case against the side of the iPad and just sit there and rub as the as the iPad moves tiny amounts back and forth inside the case. So I really like that there's no cutout here. Now, could I have gone without the larger cutout for the second gen iPads? Sure. But from what I can see, this version is improved over the old one. And I don't see them making an exclusive first gen iPad Pro or rather 2018 gen iPad Pro exclusive case, it would just be a waste of machining when this will fit both. So I'm not complaining there. I'm very happy with this so far. So anyway, guys, if you like this video, be sure to give me a like. If you have any questions, comments, or your own experiences with the Chisona H2 Pro, I would love to hear about it in the comments. I know everyone else would as well. And if you want to see more, including my full review of this thing and my determination of whether or not this is worthy of staying as part of my daily drive accessories for the iPad Pro, definitely don't forget to get subscribed.